Royal Navy and Royal Naval Reserve divers are on the final week of their elementary underwater explosive ordnance disposal course. They're learning where to place explosives to clear mines. Students have been coming in and practicing what we would call a diver place charge drill. The charge has to be placed in a particular place because a buoyant mine, the, the majority of the charge is at the bottom of the, the, the mine, so we need to get the, the charge next to that to get the, get the mine to function. And obviously on a torpedo, it's the, the, the main charge is in a certain area, so they need to get that, otherwise it's not gonna, we're, not, we're not gonna get it to do what we want it to do. Sometimes you can't really see you know, more than a metre in front of you, sometimes you can't really see anything in front of you, so it's a lot of relying on sort of your touch and sort of sensors. Stuff floats, floats in really awkward places underwater, uh, gets cold quick, so if you're not really wearing sort of like the correct type of stuff, you can get pretty cold down there, stop being able to use your hands as much as you'd like to. Ewan began his Navy service as a chef, but now he's looking for a new adventure. So too are David and Jamie. Well, initially I was I was in the army for nine nine years. I got out, worked away for a bit. I wanted to join back up to miss service life, and uh, literally the only thing I want to do in the navy is clear and dive. It's it's one that's you know it's more exciting. You know you get to do more things that I find interesting. I've always enjoyed sort of adventurous sports, things like that, and uh, I feel like stuff like that is my strength. Sort of things that other people find scary that I probably wouldn't and on the flip side of that things that other people are good at I'm not so it's about adhering to my strengths really. The two world wars saw the most extensive period of maritime mining in history. It's estimated more than half a million sea mines were laid during the second world war alone. Add to that the amount of unexploded ordnance which ended up in the sea and there are millions of dangerous items that shouldn't be there. It's a legacy that still makes work for the Royal Navy. The divers of Southern Diving Unit 2 removed five tonnes of explosives from the seabed in just 12 months last year. That included removing ordnance from the path of the new HMS Queen Elizabeth in Portsmouth. There's a lot of weight on your shoulders. It takes a certain person to go down so in the middle of the night when there's, it could be sort of a raging storm, you know, they're feeling a little bit sore, sort of under the weather, seasick, whatever, but they still, they've got to get to the water, they've got a role to perform. But these regular and reservist divers wouldn't be here if they didn't think that they were that kind of person. Two, two, zero bar. They're at one of the most specialised tri-service training units in the country. Equipment checks correct, diver ready for water. DEMS is the Defence EOD Munitions and Search Training Regiment. It prepares more than 2,400 students a year from all over the world to work in bomb disposal and search. There is nothing quite like uh, the, the Defence EOD Munitions and Search Training Regiment. We have been uh, at the forefront, at uh, the cutting edge of EOD Munitions Search uh, and bomb disposal technology over the last 100 years um, with the conflict in Northern Ireland uh, from World War II and more recently in the Balkans um, in Iraq and Afghanistan, and right now at Shada. Um, so because of the, the very nature of the British uh, military involvement in conflict overseas, um, the training facility that we have here very much mirrors the defence strategic direction uh, that we've taken over the last 30 years. It's one of the last days of the course, and something unusual is happening. It's called the softly, softly process. It simulates diving at deep depths or in murky water. When these divers can't even see their hand in front of their face, they still need to be able to identify a mine, torpedo or airdropped weapon. Measuring things is key, but what do you do when you don't have a tape measure? I know that, you know, my arm length, um, is roughly 67 and a half inches. So if I'm sort of relaxed arms going like that, I, I know that that's that measurement, then I can add watts on my elbow to my middle finger. And then if I'm still not getting the measurement I want, I could add uh, this little crevice here on my finger to the fingertip, that's about an inch. You know, there's about five or six different ways you can do it. It's really actually disorientating to be honest, yeah. 
taking that one sense away just makes a massive difference. You have to really rely on touch, but then you've got to be sure not to go too, too rough with it because obviously, you know, contact. So you need to be careful with your contact, not leaning over it and things like that. So or probably the most important sense they've took away from you. The divers are marked on just how accurate their drawing and identification skills are. It's extremely important because if they come up and tell us something that isn't right, we are then going to go down the wrong avenue and we'll think that the munition, we are, effectively we could, he could come up and say, yeah, yeah, it was uh, you know, this, that and the other. And we think, oh, well, that's only a practice mine or a drill mine or something of that description. So we treat it completely differently to an absolute live mine. And obviously he could be putting himself in danger, the next person in danger, or if the ship's close to it, the whole ship's company in danger. It's test day. The students have to put all their experiences from the last two weeks into practice under the water. They wear the Clearance Diver Life Support Equipment set. It's specially designed for the mine clearance role, when even the slightest sound, changing magnetic field or pressure could have devastating consequences. As you can see here, he's got two uh, large breathing loops uh, coming down from the, from the back of the set and underneath them are two counter lungs. That basically uh, creates a loop that the uh, diver will breathe through, um, allowing no bubbles to escape, allowing the uh, system to be acoustically quiet, um, allowing us to approach uh, influence um, weapons. In the back of the set, as the diver exhales, uh, his exhale breath will come in through this side of uh, the system and then be pushed through a um, soda line, which is an absorbent um, chemical in the back. Uh, on the right-hand side here, we have an oxygen cylinder, which uh, will, as his uh, inhale breath is drawn past some oxygen sensors in the right-hand side, will, in, will inject as, as required, bringing, coming back up through the diver's inhale um, uh, manifold and then, therefore, into his next in, inhale breath. We can't show you too much of their underwater test. Keeping the exam secret is key. But just as they did on land with blacked out goggles, the divers have to identify and draw their target for their colleagues back on shore. I've been checking the length first of all and the diameter to give, give me some sort of inkling as to what it is. It should be obvious if it's buoyant or ground. Um, you're sort of looking for the shape, any sort of key ID features like horns on it or if it's smooth bodied or, you know, obviously a torpedo will have propellers on the back of it. So anything that's obvious signs as to what it, what it actually is. Diver Garrigan in the water indicates well. Three times in the chilly winter conditions, they dive the seven metre lake and record their impressions. Every dive has low visibility but the vision of a new career in sight. I'm looking forward to it, definitely. It's been a long training, so obviously it's been building up to this and now it's good just to get to the end and know the fact that I'm going to go do my job. It makes you want to learn more, really, and I never thought I'd say that, but um, because it keeps you alive, I guess. Um, so always about educating yourself, really, and just um, you want to be a, a good member of a team. <laughs> Every year across the UK and on mine hunters in the Gulf and the Mediterranean, Royal Navy divers deal with hundreds of underwater incidents and help keep our seas safe. With all seven students here passing the course, this next generation will soon join them.